Hello everyone, my name is Sarah Njambi Rono. I am a developer advocate at Open Knowledge International and today we are going to be talking about the data package creator. But before we learn how to use the tool, it is important to understand um, when to use it and what it is for. So as the name suggests, the data package creator is designed to help you create data packages. Data packages themselves are an important part of a frictionless data project, um, which aims to reduce friction in working with data. So you can think of a data package as a simple container format that allows you to put all your related data um, and a schema and descriptive metadata for your collection of related data in one place, which ensures that once you share it, people have the context that they need to work with your data. For example, they know what licenses are attached to your data, they know the original source of the data and such like things. So we are going to be learning how to create um, a simple data package um, that has data on color codes um, in hex format and in the RGB code format. And so we're going to package this data and then we are going to add um, necessary metadata um, to help describe what our data package is about. And then we are also going to see the kind of schema that is generated from this tool. Um, so before we start, it is important to understand that this tool helps you to one, um, upload or um, define your different data resources that are related and that you want to package in one place and you are able to do that here in the middle. So every data set will be a different resource and you are able to add and delete resources um, as you wish and you're going to see how to do that. And then on the left side, you're able to add metadata um, so to describe your data resource, your collection of data resources and to provide uh, the original source of the data um, to specify what licenses um, are attached to your data resources so that people know how to use them ethically um, and make attributions if they need to um, and such like things. And then on the right hand side, we're going to see how um, the data package creator helps us to write a schema without having to get into the details of it. So for every resource that you'll add, it's going to uh, populate the schema file for you. And at the end of the day, you're going to be able to download um, the schema file um, and um, share it together with your resources uh, wherever else, be it by publishing this data or by zipping it and mailing it elsewhere and things like that. So let's get started. Um, so like I said, I am interested in um, packaging this simple data set um, and I'm also going to provide a link to the original source um, where I got this data set from. So it, it defines um, color names and the hexadecimal codes and the RGB codes and others. Um, so I found it really useful because it has over a thousand um, colors and codes defined. And so I'm going to simply package it. And in a different video, I will be checking this data set for errors, if any. And then I'm also going to be publishing this, this data set, um, this data set as a data package. So in this video, we're just going to be creating the data package itself. Um, so the first step is to provide a link, um, to link to your data set or to upload it from your local uh, machine. So in this case, I'm going to download it from my local machine because as you can see, my source is a web page. And so it won't be very helpful as I've had to scrape this data uh, using R um, in order to have it as a simple CSV file. So I'm going to load it from my local machine and I'm just going to navigate to where my 
data set is and there it is color codes.csv and once i load my csv file what happens is it detects that it has eight fields um, or eight columns and asks if i want to infer these fields and i'm just quickly going to click on that prompt and what it does is it adds my my data set fields and um, it tells me the data type against each field that it has detected and the data format. Um, so what you're able to do once you upload a resource um, is you're able to rename it, uh, name the resource in a more descriptive way. And so I'm going to call mine color codes. Um, and then you're also able to replace the path um, especially when you upload it, it is um, good practice to not link uh, because this is a local file and no one will be able to find it later. It is good practice to replace that path with um, a web URL so that it's easier for people to find this data set later. Um, and that won't remove from any of your inferred fields. Um, so that's just good practice. The other thing you're able to do is you're able to add a title for each resource that you create. Um, you're also able to, so we can just call it color codes. And um, you're able to specify a profile. So this profile tells us how to deal with this data. So all tabular data resources um, use the frictionless data tabular data resource profile. And um, you, are, you, can, you can see how to work with the different profiles on the frictionless data website. Um, so just go to the specifications page and um, find the profiles page and, and see how the different um, profiles um, work. Um, and then you're able to specify the format as well and it's CSV for hours and if we leave this blank then it's just going to use the UTF-8 um, encoding format and you can add a description as you want. We're just going to leave it blank for now. And then for every field that's inferred, you're also able to edit out the information in there and you're luckily able to remove the ones that you don't need. For example, um, we just have a field or a column that, you know, numbers our, looks like it, um, it numbers our rows and so we don't particularly need this. So we are able to get rid of that. And then um, you can rename this one. So I'm just going to quickly rename this one to color name. Um, and I'll leave the rest as they are. Um, right, I'll leave the rest as they are. And as you can see, it's already um, picked out the data types for me and where um, yeah so the the swatch column is also empty blank because as you can see in my original data set this just um, shows you the kind of color that you're looking at with the different codes and so um, that was carried forward to my data to, to my um, to my field um, and so to my inferred field and so because all the fields all the rows in this um, field are expected to be blank we're going to be deleting that as well the next thing we're going to be doing is changing the data types for any of the fields that we don't think have been um, assigned the best or the proper data types but it looks like all of them are fine um, as strings and so we are going to leave them like so um, but then you're also able to change them if you like um, as you can see for every change you've been making um, and I'm just going to load this um, for every change you've been making to your data resource um, so once you uploaded it um, it inferred the fields and um, enlisted the data type and the format um, 
which is default for all of them. And um, every time you make a change, for example, we changed the path after we uploaded our data file and it immediately picked it up and added it to our schema. So you don't have to worry about formatting your schema or knowing how to work in JSON. Um, it generates the schema file for you. Um, so we are also going to be adding metadata so that um, it describes our data package better and whoever comes by it is able to understand what our data package deals with. And if they like, they're able to add um, resources to it and um, also share it together with um, the related resources they'd like to add to our data package. So we're just going to call it the color codes data package. Um, because it contains nothing else. And like I said, um, so there's three profiles to pick from. Um, so a data package will be a collection of any types of data that you'd like. Um, so think about scripts, think about images, all of those. If you, if you had um, scripts and images and um, other types of data that are not tabular that you wanted to put together in one container, then those would constitute a data package. Um, and where you have tabular data sets, then um, the tabular data package profile is best. And where you have um, tabular data packages, um, of fiscal nature, then those constitute um, fiscal data package. So the fiscal data package is like a subset or a more specific category of the tabular data package profile. So ours is a tabular data package because we just have a CSV file. Um, and then you can add a description for your data set and you, you're also able to add um, a link to the homepage and um, a version. Um, so ours is going to be, this is the first time we're creating this data package. And so this is version one. And um, we're just going to say that I am the author. And the license for this um, is the share like license and so we're just going to spe sorry uh, we're going to specify that here um, it's a creative commons attribution share like license and um, so what what you can see here is that we have a pre-populated list of um, licenses for you to work with and um, in case yours are not included here because um, there's very many and we only added the most popular open ones um, then you can um, just choose the other option, add a title and a path for your license and then um, share that with us. Um, and then keywords make your data more discoverable. Naturally, when you share them online um, and people search for keywords and they come by yours, then it will be easier for them to find. Um, your data package and use it. Um, and so we are going to add um, color codes as a keyword and you can add um, RGB as a keyword. Um, RGB and we can add uh, CMYK and yeah, you can keep adding as you go along and yeah, it's just going to make your data more discoverable. Um, finally, um, if you wanted to add more resources, all you'd have to do is click on the add resource prompt and you'd be able to likewise upload or, um, or load from a path a, a new resource and then in further fields, and go through the entire process of deciding which fields you want to include in your data package and things like that. But we have no additional resource at this time. And so we are going to delete the second one. So our data package is ready. Our tabular data package is ready. 
Um, so what this validate button does is it checks whether your the resource that you've included um, suits the profile that you specified up here um, on the left hand side. Um, so it checks if it's a valid tabular data package, um, meaning that it suits the profile. And if it's not, it's just going to give you prompts for you to fix it. Um, so it says that our data package is valid. This means that um, we have a valid tabular data resource and um, it's properly formatted to suit the tabular data package profile. And so we are ready to download it. So click on the download prompt. And once it downloads, what you end up with is What you end up with is the data package JSON um, file. So the data package JSON file is like the basic component that makes up a data package. Without this, um, then you you do not have a data package. You just have a folder with um, files in it. But the data package JSON file is the core component in any data package. So you have your collections of data, and then you have your data package, the JSON file that contains the metadata information at the bottom. So it contains information about licenses, um, a name and a title for your data package, the version of your data package, who authored it, um, the original source of your data, um, and all the fields that are in your data resource or data resources and the data types against them. And you can edit this to add more information um, and you can see how to do this in the frictionless data website. So let me show you where to do, you'd be able to do this. Just go to specifications. And once you're there, look at the table schema section. Um, and this helps you know um, what kinds of field descriptors you're able to add. Um, so you, you're able to add a name and a title and um, a data type, which all of which you are able to do, right? Um, but there's some things that uh, we have removed from the data package creator so that it's not a lengthy process, but um, also so that it includes the core components that make up a valid um, schema for your data resources by our standards. Um, so this is what the final um, data package looks like. Um, we have a data folder in which we have our CSV file um, that we scraped and um, obtained from the website. And then we have the scripts folder that contains the R code that you use to scrape the table from the web page. And then you have the data package.json file, which we generated um, using the data package creator tool. And then I added a readme file, which um, as you can see here, um, allows people to quickly uh, glance and understand my data package um, once I publish it to GitHub. So the readme file solely exists because I'm publishing it um, to GitHub and um, I want people to have more context for my data package. Um, if I had any images um, or um, other related files that I wanted to add, um, those would go in a new folder called docs. Um, so that's it. We now have our data package and in the next video we are going to learn how to check our data resources in our data package for errors um, using frictionless data's um, good tables tool. Thank you.